take a look at me. Take a really good look at me. Who do you see? Do you see a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, a sister? Do you see a, a Toastmaster, a coach? Do you see perhaps just a quirky old lady with a beautiful smile? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I have no idea who you see. However, I can almost guarantee who you don't see. You don't see a woman who has suffered with mental illness for most of her life. Mental illness has no look. The illness takes place in the brain. And according to 2022 Statistics Canada data, one in three Canadians will have a mental illness in their lifetime. Mental illness is a broad term describing over 28 disorders. These could be mood disorders, such as major depression or bipolar disorder. They could be anxiety, eating, or personality disorders. Even addiction and psychotic disorders fall underneath the mental illness umbrella. The World Health Organization estimates that 90% of people who die by suicide are suffering from some form of mental illness, usually some sort of depression or substance abuse. These people often feel that life is hopeless. The suicide statistics in Canada are mind boggling. Every day, 12 Canadians die by suicide. Suicide is also the, the number two cause of death in young people age 15 to 34. That breaks my heart. I now invite you to listen to my story of hope and triumph. When I was 18 months old, I was kidnapped by a family member and taken from my mother. Within three months, my mother had regained custody and I was back in her care. When I was five, my mother told me that my father had died in a car accident. When I was six, I was sexually and emotionally abused by my mom's boyfriend. That abuse lasted about five years. When I was 12, I found out not only was my father alive, but I had siblings and they wanted to meet me. My teenage years, I spent searching for love, for acceptance, for some sort of normal, for hope. But I had no idea what that looked like. I just continued with life as I knew it. I didn't love myself. In fact, I blamed myself for all the horrific things that had happened to me. As an adult, I have been homeless. I've been raped. I've been abused. I have planned my suicide way too many times to count. And I have attempted a few times. But wait, I told you this was a happy story of hope. In 2014, after experiencing a psychotic break, I was diagnosed with major depression, with anxiety, with PTSD, with ADHD, and a whole whack of other disorders just thrown in for good measure. I was put on a truckload of medication, and I was told by my psychiatric team that because of the length of time I had suffered from all of my disorders, it was very likely that I would remain medicated for the rest of my life. But on my journey to wellness, I started making changes that served me. I got out of a 25 year abu abusive relationship and I moved to Calgary to be closer to my son. 
in 2018, I began taking courses in Reiki and bioenergy healing, expanding a spiritual journey. In 2021, I was cruising Facebook. How many of you have done that? Just cruising Facebook. And I saw an ad for Peter Sage. I'd never heard of Peter Sage. I didn't know who he was or what he did. But my friend and fellow Toastmaster, Asif Zed, had liked that post. And I thought, if Asif liked him, he's got to be great. I clicked on that post, learned more about Peter and his transformational uh, programs, and I joined one of them. It was called the Elite Mentorship Forum. And I liked the sound of being a mentor because we do that in Toastmasters all the time. I thought, this is going to be great. And it truly was. It absolutely changed my life. I feel amazing. I am no longer on any medication for my mental health. I am now a certified trainer in that very program that I took. I am following a coaching journey that sings to my heart. I moved to Vancouver Island so I could be closer to a spiritual source. I can feel God moving through my veins as I help others to achieve their dreams. I have a purpose like I have never had before. Mental illness can be controlled with medication and with a lot of work. My message to everyone listening is there is always hope, always. I won my 58 year long battle and anyone listening can win theirs as well. The best way to reduce and eventually eradicate mental illness is to talk about it and talk about the stigma. If you know someone who is suffering in silence or you yourself is, are suffering in silence, get help. There's plenty out there. So I'll ask you one more time. Take a look at me. Who do you see? <laughs>